Professor Diamesis, teaching on the Rose College Introduction and Corrections. I'm doing a lecture today on uh, the death penalty, a very controversial uh, issue in corrections and in uh, law enforcement. Um, I have my students here, I'm just going to ask them, who is, who is for the death penalty? Let me see you raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. We have almost unanimous uh, a group here for the pro-death penalty. Okay, death penalty is a uh, is a very very touchy touchy discussion. Uh, in, in my in my uh, career, I've had a lot of advocates who were against the death penalty until unfortunately something happened to one of their loved ones, and they couldn't uh, couldn't be a, an advocate for the death penalty as, as soon as one of their loved ones was murdered in a, in a criminal activity. So that's how it definitely works usually. And it's unfortunate, but we're going to do this. We're going to go back a little bit. Now, this is termed capital punishment. Generally, it refers to execution in the name of the state of a person who's convicted of certain crimes. The crimes of which the punishment has been imposed have varied over the centuries, but treason, murder, rape have been most common. Okay. The early primitive societies, personal re retaliation. For example, retaliation was encouraged by members of a tribal group. Personal revenge was not considered law, and this influenced most legal systems, especially English criminal law and American criminal law. Blood feud was a term back in those days, in which the victim's family or the tribe would take revenge on the offender's family or tribe and result in endless vendetta between those two groups or two injured families. Okay, so during the 17th and 18th century, death by hanging, crucifixion, burning at the stake, drowning, or being drawn and quartered. Now, being drawn and quartered, one of my students did a nice presentation on a death penalty, and he discussed what drawn and quartered actually was, where all the limbs are secured to horses, and they, they actually pull the uh, limbs in the, all the limbs apart, and that was part of a very serious severe punishment back in those days. Present day executions, firing squad, hanging, electric chair, gas chamber, lethal injection. Pennsylvania has lethal injection of the state correctional institution of Rockford, and I'll talk about that later on. Uh, Captain George Kendall actually was the first individual that was formally executed. He was born in 1570 and died in 1608. He was a member of the first consul at Jamestown, he was put to death for mutiny against the, the British crime, having been suspected of spying for Spain. He was also accused of trying to incite mutiny and unrest in Jamestown. He was executed using a firing squad. Now, here's how we do the firing squad. In certain states, they give you an option of your choice of how you want to be executed. This is the firing squad. What they do is back execution by electric electric chair. This is a, uh, a very uh, brutal form of execution. Now this is a, uh, I believe this is San Quentin's uh, death chamber and it was converted to uh, using uh, the in the gas chamber. There was a, there was a seat in there and pellets. This is a uh, Definition of Furman versus Georgia, a very important case back then in 1972. Um, ruled that capital punishment laws as then enforced were unconstitutional. The court stated that the death penalty itself did not violate the Constitution, but the manner of its application in many states did. It was shown that capital punishment was likely to be imposed in a discriminatory way, and that blacks in particular were far more likely to be executed than whites. The decision required a system for applying the death penalty that would not be discriminatory against any racial or other minority. Many states have since passed laws that meet the court requirements of specifying the crimes or circumstances for which the death penalty is to be considered. Right, thank you. Furman actually fought under this um, versus Georgia because there's no equal uh, prosecution under the law and minorities were being uh, executed at a, at a higher exponential rate versus the whites that were on death row also. 
So, and according to this law, what happened with this law, as you can see below, because of this case, it spared 500 inmates on death row from execution. And one of those inmates was Charles Manson. So he was speared by this firm in Brussels, Georgia. Okay. Okay, so this is my old facility. I worked here 18 years. Now, a little bit before my time, uh, some of the older correctional officers would tell us about the, de the death penalty. When someone was uh, condemned to die, the uh, state police would bring that condemned individual the day before that he was, he, or she, he was supposed to be executed. So what we would do, we would take him up there as 22 range, that was a penitentiary range. And this particular inmate who was going to be executed the following day would be placed in 22A under 24 hours supervision by a correctional officer. Isaiah, why would they, why, why would we have an officer there for 24 hours? To make sure that uh, no one would um, harm themselves. Cheat the state, that's yeah. right, that's right. And the officer would sit there with coffee, uh, to talk to Vaca, give the condemned whatever he wanted uh, those 24 hours. So the next morning, the state troopers would arrive they would go back to 22A, a correctional officer would escort him there, 22A, and the inmate would be strip searched, would be secured with uh, securing devices, transport belt, transport up to the SCI Rockview, where they would be, he would be electrocuted. And that happened the next day. So that's what, that's what that facility on that, that particular range happened. Okay, now, Greg versus Georgia. Gracie, how about reading that? Okay. Um, it upheld the constitutionality of the death penalty for first degree murder as long as the individual character of the offender and the circumstances of the crime are taken into account. A two part proceeding was thus required one to determine guilt or innocence and another to determine the sentence. Opponents of the Georgia death penalty statute have claimed that it violates Eighth Amendment guarantees against cruel and unusual punishment. However, the Supreme Court found that the statute contained sufficient guidelines regarding jury deliberation and decision to enable the law to be imposed without insulting, arbitrary, and, or discriminatory application. In two related cases decided the same day, the court cautioned against states requiring mandatory death sentences for certain crimes, since such a requirement precluded the possibility of considering mitigating circumstances. Right, right. So as long as the inmate that was, was being executed was uh, prosecuted equally under the law. This was what Greg did. So Greg uh, was uh, Greg was a very instrumental uh, a law that reinstated the death penalty. We, we became using the death penalty after Greg was reinstated. Okay, does anybody know who this guy is? Anybody hear this guy? Okay, this is Gary Hinding. He was a seller of whores in uh, Philadelphia. Okay, this man was an animal. What he did to what he did to women, he actually uh, chained them in the basement, placed them in a pit, and he had them there for for a length of time that he would murder them. Okay, this man had 148 IQ. So Gary Hinding, what happened, he came down to our place, under our old facility, down in this, we, we placed him in a mental health unit. And he was there for three weeks. He tried to get a change of venue, okay, and have his court case moved from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh, but that never happened. And he was in our, he was in our mental health for, for three, uh, three weeks. And then he was ultimately, uh, ultimately stood trial in Philadelphia. He was, he was adjudicated guilty. A good friend of mine worked with the penitentiary. He actually transported him to the death chamber and he told him that he would be the last inmate to be executed in the state of Pennsylvania. So far, he's right. Okay? So, this is the kind of people that are, get executed. Okay. Now, this is, where it's, this is where it's done. I had the opportunity to tour this. This is SCI. Rockview, State Correctional Institution of Rockview. This is a death, death chamber. Okay, I got permission back in 2003 when I wrote my capstone thesis on uh, capital punishment DNA testing. Now, the inmate is strapped to that gurney, 
and those those worms that extend have angle wire in them. So you could put three three hundred pound people on it, it's not even gonna move. And they would uh, would put them in all all point four point restraints with a with a chest chest harness. Okay, behind here is what's where the executioner stands. This here is a little hole with rubber fingers and the IVs come out through that hole into the inmate's arm, the condemned arm. Now we don't know what, what chemicals the state of Pennsylvania, DOC uses, they, they won't tell you, but it works. Now there's the phone. Now that phone is connected to a battery of phones that are upstairs and the DOC mans them. Could be with a governor, could be federal judges, could be every. There could be maybe 20 people up there being in those phones. I don't know if they changed it or what, but when I was there, I, I saw that. So this is a curtain that's closed. When the condemned is ready, they order the curtain open. There's two sections. Uh, one has the witnesses on in the middle of the uh, room, and then there's a partition where the victim's family is is, uh, is seated. Okay. So the warden, if there's no warden or superintendent, if there's no uh, uh, stage of execution, the execution proceeds. And the inmate will expire. Okay? And the last one to sit in that gurney was Gary Hyman, who was executed. Is there any questions on any of that? What year was that, Al? Uh, So that was the last uh, execution in Pennsylvania. 1999, it looks like. 19, July of 1999. That's when he was executed. So you just go back for a second. You can see some of the, the pictures. 148 IQ. It's not coming up, but you get the you get the gist. So that's what the that's what the death penalty is. You know, a lot of. Uh, in my career, and my, my colleagues and my friends who worked in our career, you know, a lot of individuals that were on death row and, and we dealt with who were murderers and are on death row right now. And that's where they'll sit until the death warrant is signed and uh, the execution is carried out. Right now, the uh, governor of Pennsylvania and the governor of uh, California have a uh, moratorium on the death penalty. So no one's getting executed or will get executed. Any questions on anything? Yes, Gracie. Is it cheaper to um, execute someone than to keep them in jail? Well, see, you're keeping them in jail for probably anywhere from 20 to 30 years at times, depending on the rapidness of the uh, death warrant. So it costs anywhere from uh, $1.5 million to $2 million to keep them housed on, on uh, death row. And what happens... The calculation is made from the time the inmate is arrested, the time the inmate is, is tried, incarcerated in the county level, then incarcerated in a, in a federal or state level, and that cost continues until an inmate is, is uh, expired or is, is executed. So that's where the cost comes in, that's where it compounds. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about anybody else? Isaiah, you did a nice presentation. What do you have to say about that? Um, I mean, from what the book stated was that it was cheaper to uh, keep them in prison for life because it's, uh, I guess, like the, maybe the, the amount of money that, you know, the chemical or whatever, I don't know if that's like the, the majority of the cost. I don't really no, know. No, it's, it's, it's incarceration. It's, a, it's the closest yeah. of the incarcerated because you have to have a lot of uh, uh, labor-intensive uh, situations. Yeah. Right Oh, and that was another thing that, that it said, too, was that it's cheaper to incarcerate because sometimes, like, if like if someone were to get parole, just say whatever, I mean, they would have, they would get out of the system. But yeah. if they stay in the system, that's when the, the costs accumulate, right? Well, yeah, the, it's over that period of time, right? Yeah. But, yes, legal fees. Legal fees, legal fees, right? Like it's one. Yeah. 
you know, and then it's, it's the upkeep, and it's, they're, they're, they're secure 23 hours a day in, in, in the setting, in, in a very secure environment setting. But it's, uh, and the other, the other issue is parole, uh, life in prison without the possibility of parole. Look what happened to Matt and Sweat up in Clinton and in New York when they, they escaped. And all those, all those thoughts, but all those corrections officers and all the law enforcement individuals had to go across the state trying to find them and locate them. And uh, that's what happens. They, they should have been executed instead of some individual having them, you know, helping them to escape because they were, they were put in a, in a, what's called an honors block and they were as dangerous as it, as it comes, and they were, they were uh, sentenced, they, they were murderers, and they, was, they should have been sentenced to uh, death, uh, you know, and ex executed, but they didn't. That's what happened, they got to escape. That's the problem, that's the problem with having uh, lifers with the possibility of parole versus someone who's, who's on death row and executed. That's what they executed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Gracie, yes. Okay, well. That's okay. <laughs> so Pennsylvania has the death penalty. Right. So why don't we execute people? Like, do you think the synagogue leader is going to get the death penalty? He, he should. He should. He, he definitely should. Uh, there's a lot of other individuals that definitely should. Mm -hmm. But it's individuals like governors that want to have a moratorium because they think it's, it's unfair, it's unjust, whatever their convoluted reason is. But you talk to the victims of the families, and they give you a different answer. And uh, that's that's the whole problem, that's the whole issue with that. So this guy there, he killed all those all those innocent people at the Tree of Life uh, synagogue, mm -hmm. and uh, he'll probably spend the rest of his life, you know, on death row, and uh, probably never get executed. So that's the only problem. So why are, why are they not getting executed? Because the governor put a moratorium on on execution, Governor Wolf. So as long as there's a moratorium, there will be no execution. What does that mean? That means it's the uh, inmates that are that are on that road, on death row, will not be executed because the governor deems it that uh, it's it's not constitutional actually. So that's what uh, that's what's going on there. That's what happened out in California. See, when I did when I did my my cash I did it on capital punishment DNA testing. One one wrong execution is one too many. We all agree on that. Okay. And the thing about DNA testing is, is a very, very excellent manner and method of measuring and determining if DNA was at the crime scene, you know, and that can actually be a very good measurement of, of, of that individual not being executed because he, he or she, that wasn't his or her DNA. So that's, that's, that's major, that's a major problem with that. Haley. Um, I was just gonna say that I Googled the chemicals used in the Pennsylvania lethal injection. Okay. And it came up. Um, it's a sedative, sodium mm -hmm. thiopental, okay. followed by a paralytic, pantheronium right. bromide, and then potassium chloride, which that's the whole thing. Right, right. That's, that, and that's the size, that's basically what happens. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's been uh, court cases that it makes it follow. Because it, that that actually, actually, actually didn't did not happen that way did not work, so uh, and they filed a you know a lawsuit. I said it was uh, against the Eighth Amendment, cruel and unusual punishment, but they upheld they upheld it. So, how about you guys? Anybody else? How about you, uh, my videographer? What do you have to say? Uh, I think it. it it boils down to Pennsylvania's uh, death penalty is <clears throat> the responsibility of one man, and that's the governor. Mm -hmm. if, it, if you have a conservative governor, uh, again, that can change. If you have a, a liberal governor, that can change. He's the one that has to sign the decree, you know, for the death to happen. So the death is supposed to happen, you know, automatically and then the governor can stop this but as Al was mentioning um, with Governor Wolf he has a, a decree now where it's blanketed there are no executions and you know where you would constantly I mean when we were growing up in the 80s especially and 
I, I remember as a young kid in high school, there was going to be an execution, and it would be at Rockview, and it would be on TV. People would have laid outside. You know, there would be pro or anti against. But um, again, you know, the social <clears throat> structure changes over the years. So our social structure leans one way, and, and you know, and it's all political. So the basis of the backbone of this is a political agenda. You know, whether you're, you know, for or against, and it, it lays on one man's hands. You know. But that's where we are in the state of Pennsylvania yeah. and in the state of California. Mm -hmm. So right now there's no death penalty, uh, no execution period, and uh, and I believe the probably uh, I think the governor of California is going to dissemble that uh, you know the uh, death for the death penalty. Okay, any other questions before we go on? That's it? Yeah. Are there, are, are there, which are the states that are actively? There's a lot of states, so I can't, Texas. I, don't have a, I don't have a top of my head. You can Google that and find them. 